Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC, and welcome to another Babylon video. Today we're looking at part five of our hex tile grid demo video series. I feel like I add more words every time I say it. If you don't remember what it is that we're actually creating, this is it. It's this awesome hex tile grid demo where you can click on any given tile and you got a 50-50 chance of generating procedural noise-based islands. How cool is that? Today, we're continuing right where we left off on building the top surface material, uh, excuse me, uh, shader, the shader for the top water uh, surface. Uh, we're going to add that question mark that you see uh, in the beginning of this onto that existing noise pattern that we have. So let me uh, switch right on over to where we left off in the last uh, video. Now, in this one, I do want to highlight that I'm also adding in uh, a very, very similar material to that water material top. I'm adding it to the bottom as well. So let me walk through that. Basically, I create a new variable called water material bottom. Inside, encapsulated inside the loading of the uh, water material top node material, I'm then loading the bottom as well, setting that node material to be water material bottom and then setting its name to water material bottom then that doesn't get used until a hex tile is clicked on. So underneath these hex tiles, there is no shader uh, node material applied to that specific uh, bottom uh, surface, that bottom mesh. However, when I do actually pick on one, I'm going to then get sibling meshes, right? These sibling meshes, we've done this before. I get the pick result, I get the picked mesh, then I get the parent of the picked mesh, then I get the children of that parent, so I get all of the siblings of the mesh that I picked. I loop through them here, and then what I'm going to do is say, are any of them named bottom? And if so, I'm going to make their material equal to the water material bottom. And when I do that, it gets, oh, hey, look, we found an island. Uh, when we do that, we get a very, very similar node material. It looks almost identical. The only difference is it doesn't have the question mark. It's a little uh, translucent, right? It has um, the visibility is taken down a little bit. And then um, it also is a much tighter noise, right? So I've uh, essentially scaled out that noise so I can see a lot more of it, but that's essentially it. Okay, so that's all we've done for the bottom surface. Uh, by the way, the reason it's translucent is because the color that I'm using for the terrain later will pop through a little bit and it'll kind of create a cool effect. So now let's get to the bulk of what we want to talk about in this video, which is adding the question mark on top of that top uh, water material, that water material top. So we're going to go open that node material up. I can do that uh, right here. We'll go water material top. I'm going to open up the node material editor. We're going to open this up. Now, this is going to look super, super familiar, right? This is the all, everything above these kind of lines here is basically everything related to the underlying water um, effect, that kind of noise effect. And then everything below it is the question mark. Now, if you look at this, it's actually really, really similar to what I've used on top. In fact, I basically cut and paste, uh, copied and pasted, excuse me, uh, all of these nodes, including all of the noise, including the whirly noise. And so I only thing I've done for the question mark is I've changed the values. And the reason I want to do that is because I want the question mark to feel like it kind of is a part of the same movement, but also kind of independent of it as well. So it's not a one-to-one -one match to the, the noise that's underneath it. And so then from there, it's pretty straightforward, stuff that you'll probably be familiar with already. So let me get rid of my picture and picture here so that we can see this really, really easily. Basically, I'm going to take the output of all of the noise and I'm going to add them together. Then I'm going to remap that so that it's going to basically be between zero and one. And the output of this multiply then is its own, excuse me, the output of this remap node is basically its own individual noise pattern, just like you've seen up above. It looks just like this. The only difference is you can kind of see that cell structure underneath. It just has a different pattern to it because I've shaped it a little bit differently. Okay, so now let's go and check out what happens when I connect up this multiply. Now, the result of this, remember we used a mask up above with this hex tile up here. We're doing the exact same thing for this texture as well. So when I multiply the output of this noise that we're seeing here, this noise multiplied against this texture will then only show us noise where there's white in this texture. It functions as a mask. So when I hook up this multiply just like this, we get boom. How awesome is that? You get to actually see, sorry, picture in picture is in the way yet again. Uh, we actually get to see the question mark and the noise only covering that question mark. So then from there, basically the only things that I'm doing 
is I'm taking the output of this multiply, passing it into X, Y, and Z. Now I'm using a vector merger. Honestly, you could absolutely use a color merger as well. Uh, we probably should just for uh, consistency sake, just to make it a little bit more clear that I'm passing this into the RGB channels. Essentially, it's still a vector three, uh, but basically what I wanna do is then uh, take this color merger vector three and multiply that against a color here. And the reason I'm doing this color is so that I can actually sh change kind of the, the general look of the whitest parts of the noise. Sorry, I have to hook this up to the preview here. There we go. So now you can see it kind of has that blue color. So you can kind of give it whatever effect you want, but I want the question mark to have color independent of say the gradient up here of the water color underneath it. So I'm going to put that back to kind of a really, really light shade of blue. And then I basically just clamp between zero and one, the output of this. So we have a very, very clean zero to one map of this question mark. And then finally, it's just as simple as adding it against the existing water material. And then you have the question mark on top of that water surface. I think that is super, super, super cool. And basically what you end up with it when you close this, of course, then is it applied over and over and over again. So that is actually it for this particular video. It's super simple to use masks and textures and a different noise pattern and then layer them on top of each other to create this really cool effect where the question mark feels like it's kind of on that surface, but also has sort of its own movement as well. And that's how I created that effect. And that actually is the entirety of the node material, the shader for that top water surface material. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've gotten something out of it on how you can layer different types of noises together and use masks on how you layer them together and how you part them together. I hope you're also enjoying this video series. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments down below. And if you have not already done so, would you please consider subscribing to this channel so that you don't miss any future updates? We try hard to bring uh, videos to you roughly once a week, and we want to make sure that you don't miss any of those and that we are adding value uh, to what you're learning in the Babylon JS ecosystem. Thank you so much for checking this out, and I will see you in the next one.